Cinity, your digital cinema tech resource. Hey, Maki-san, how are you? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm okay. It's really nice to see you again. I'm very happy to meet you again. Thank you very much for having me at your headquarters. And you will actually will celebrate 60 years in September. That's correct. Which is an amazing achievement, especially in such a changing climate and industry. If you had to kind of make a summary of those 60 years <laughs> in one minute, what are the highlights? Well, uh, uh, Sigma was founded uh, 60 years ago in 1961. Uh, when my father was 27 years old. He, the small company that my father worked for had bankrupt at the time. Uh, went bankrupt? Went back bankrupt. And uh, he, uh, he was working hard uh, to, uh, to finish the old, you know, to close the office. But, uh, but at that time, the, the, the supplier of the, for that company he lost job. So uh, they asked my father to set up a new company to create the jobs for the suppliers. That's the beginning of Sigma. And uh, since then, uh, we've been work, uh, uh, since the beginning, uh, we are working for the, the optics, I mean lenses for cameras and the videos. And uh, we've been continuing this uh, for six years. And during this period, uh, my father dreamed to be a camera manufacturer. So we've been challenging to become a, a camera manufacturer. So if he was with us today, and of course, since, since he passed away, it's quite a few years. Yep. But what, what do you think the first thing he would say when he sees that such much bigger factory, so many more people, and you are really making now cameras? Mm, probably if, what, if he were here, he would say, you should do more. <laughs> really? that's, yes. That's what you... He is a one of, man of vision, and he's always tried to do the, as much as he could. So he never be satisfied. And he always tried to be better, bigger. He has really big vision. He had a very, really big vision. Do you think you are the same? Mm, <laughs> I'm not sure, uh, but the, when uh, I'm not uh, aiming to make the Sigma company uh, big, but the, when it comes to quality, I'm really uh, hungry about it, uh, like my father. I always uh, try to achieve the best quality uh, when it comes to our products. It has been a really challenging 36 months for, uh, for the industry because of the pandemic. Where, where is Sigma right now? Things always have two sides. I mean, uh, positive side and negative side. Of course, uh, since the pandemic, uh, our activity in terms of marketing, sales, and also uh, uh, technology development and manufacturing, we are so, so much affected uh, by the pandemic. But on the other, hand, on the other side, uh, I see some you know, a positive aspect uh, from this pandemic because of course this is very sad and tragic tragic uh, situation but uh, because we couldn't uh, uh, participate in the exhibition or because we couldn't uh, create the, uh, the have uh, the event uh, we try to find another way to contact uh, customer directly and we found the online is a very powerful tool to contact or to communicate with the customers directly. And uh, I think uh, during this period, uh, we have we own more ways to approach customers directly and uh, you know convey our message to the customers. So that's a good aspect uh, of uh, pandemic. A few months ago, you introduced the the new Sigma FPL camera. What are actually the challenges when you have to produce a new camera? Maybe you can share with our audience. Uh, Sigma is a relatively small company compared to the big players in the, in the industry. So we have limited resources. Uh, so we can't do, we can't input everything in the camera. So we have to decide 
what's the higher priority for the customers. And uh, we, should f we need to focus on that features. So first thing for us to do is to uh, create the concept of the product and the choose the, the, the features with a high priority very carefully and have engineers implement it. Uh, but uh, we, we, I think uh, we, uh, our engineer did a great job to make uh, our FPL. Do you think that you found your niche and audience for your camera? We are, I think we are in the, the middle of the process uh, to find uh, our, uh, our places. But uh, I think uh, we can find uh, such a place because uh, the, the customer's needs ha has been continuously diversifying. So uh, we, think, uh, we believe uh, there are some people who can't be satisfied with uh, the current uh, cameras on the market today. So we are always exploring such opportunity for us. And when you look backwards, do you think what was wiser from the marketing perspective? to announce the new FPL as an update and maybe call it FP Mark II, for example, mm -hmm. or really declare it as a whole new camera, if you look backwards. The basically, the concept, concept is the same, but uh, we don't uh, you know, uh, position the FPL uh, as a higher or uh, you know, uh, a higher spec camera or a top, uh, top line camera. Uh, we intended that the FPL uh, have more uh, flexibility in, in terms of the quality and functionality of the camera. From your perspective, it's okay to have it as a completely new camera and not more like an uh, update? Oh, no, because that's why we sell the two cameras, uh, both cameras, uh, at the same time. Can you share with us maybe what will be the next step in the FP line? Mm, actually, uh, no, right now we are discussing internally uh, uh, what we should do, uh, what we can do uh, for the customers next. And uh, we are very happy to have the feedback from the market and also from you. Thank you very much. What was really interesting for me to see, as you invited us for the launch of the original FP camera, yep. And I remember you standing on the stage, of course very proud, because it was a very nice, important moment. But at that time, my feeling was that you are aiming the original FP towards professional photographers and filmmakers. Mm. But with the FPL, it seems as if you moved or shifted away for a wider range of audience. Mm. Maybe YouTubers or people that would like to stream some stuff. Why did you make this shift? Mm. It, yeah, uh, there is uh, some the confusion uh, among the, the potential customers. Uh, the, the, what the uh, FPL is or what the FPL is, is for. Uh, but the, uh, we think uh, the, because the FPL can do more than uh, original FP, so like it has a 61 megapixel. So uh, for the still photo, you can crop the image or uh, you can try the uh, the you know uh, different uh, aspect ratio things like that. So we think uh, we could appeal a uh, wider range of uh, customers. Uh, but the still, there the, I, I admit that there is still some confusion in the market. But still, uh, we still look look at the enthusiast, in, uh, either still photo or film. Uh, and actually, uh, we see that the more and more people are interested in the photography and also uh, f filming. Yeah. So uh, we hope such the, the customers are inter will be interested in FP and FPL. This time, I was not able to visit your factory in Aizu. Can you please share with our audience if anything is new? Did you expand the factory? Yes. Uh, uh, we. First of all, we do not expand the uh, production capacity. Uh, actually, our production capacity is the same, but uh, in order to enhance the product quality even mm, further, uh, we needed to uh, build a new building. Uh, in order to you know, uh, process the parts uh, with even tighter uh, tolerances or 
uh, in order to assemble the camera with very high accuracy uh, or check uh, the camera very high accuracy, we need to bring the more machines or we need to bring the more uh, checking uh, instruments in which needs more space. So during this uh, period, uh, first of all, we built the three uh, floor uh, new building just for assembly. Uh, we need more space, uh, not for the uh, you know, uh, increasing the capacity, uh, but to enhance the okay. quality control. Uh, we need to check every details of the, uh, the products. And also we built a new uh, logistics center uh, which contains uh, all the uh, shipping products. And also that building uh, also includes uh, our customer uh, support uh, team, which if we uh, repair the, the customer's products. We believe the customer support is extremely important. So we uh, prepared a very nice environment for the customer support team. Let's talk a little bit about lenses. Uh, most of the cameras are getting smaller in size, mm -hmm. but still there's a huge lack of small compact and pancake lenses. From your perspective, why it's not in the market? <laughs> First of all, we are always trying to uh, make it as, uh, as small as possible. But the, the, the pancake lens, uh, we still can't find the way to uh, uh, develop the pancake lens with uh, uh, acceptable quality. Uh, in order to make a very small lens like pancake, probably we need to uh, compromise the, the quality. But uh, we, it, having said that, we don't mean we don't stop uh, exploring our way uh, to achieve it. But the, right now it's quite uh, challenging, mm. especially you know uh, the, different from the film. The, uh, the image sensor uh, need to. Uh, accept uh, the ray uh, within a limited uh, angle. So it makes uh, us to make the, the good quality pancake lens. Talking about lenses, there's only one Chinese manufacturer who is doing modestly priced anamorphic prime lenses. This mm. is a question that I ask various lens manufacturers because I'm very curious uh, about the answer. And you are part of the L Mount Alliance, and of course, this can generate more sales. Is it uh, something interesting for you to do, like uh, on the budget anamorphic lenses? Actually, uh, we've got so many requests uh, from the, especially from the uh, cinematographers, to make uh, the uh, anamorphic lens, uh, and uh, uh, I'm very interested in mm, developing such a lens, but. Uh, Right now, we don't have the plan for it. Um, but uh, uh, I like to explore uh, uh, the way to make the anamorphic lens. The biggest challenge for us is, uh, is to understand the needs of the customers. They say the anamorphic lens should have some kind of character, which is uh, very difficult to translate into the engineering term. Very easy. Don't make it perfect. <laughs> okay. Everybody so says so, but uh, uh, we are not sure how imperfect we should make the lens for. So, you know, it's easy for me to ask engineers, please try to make it as po uh, perfect as possible. But the, the other way around is very challenging. I mean, I think I'm... Um, if it's a modestly priced lens, mm -hmm. people will accept limitations also. Actually, uh, this is uh, more complicated than we thought before, uh, because you know, as a manufacturer, and also our main business in the steel photo. So, uh, in, in the case of steel photo market, there are many kinds of customers. So we need to uh, provide a, the near perfect uh, optics so that m most of the customers can be satisfied with. But different from the still photo market, the, the film industry is quite different. You know, the, the main customers are very sophisticated and they know everything about the optics and they can you know, 
they know how to utilize the character of the lenses, which is quite different from mm. the, the consumer or photo business. Let's see what uh, the future will bring. Talking about the future, when I look at your uh, line of lenses, still you don't have anything for Fujifilm. What is the reason? Is that a lack of communication with Fujifilm or you just think there's no interest in Sigma lenses for Fujifilm? We are also uh, aware uh, that there is a demand uh, for Fuji camera and uh, we are now uh, seriously uh, thinking about it. Uh, how we can satisfy the Fuji customers. Nice. Mm. Now to a different topic. No Japanese camera manufacturer can invest the same amount of money for R&D like mobile uh, phone companies do right now. Can you see any of the Japanese companies cooperate together in order to kind of combat those mobile phone companies? Uh, I think uh, your uh, opinion is very varied. Uh, and uh, in the future, uh, some company may collaborate together for some sp specific uh, no, uh, mm, area, mm, which uh, is not uh, the main, uh, the core concept of the product or core feature of the product. Maybe some accessories or something like that, they may collaborate each other. But uh, still, I think it's health, again, uh, it's healthy uh, for each company uh, brush up their capability and work hard to make the better quality, uh, quality product for the customers. Uh, we, in, Jap uh, in Japanese, we have a saying that uh, Sessa Takuma. Uh, Sessa Takuma is, uh, in general, means uh, the, uh, good competition among the, the competitors or libels, libel, uh, libels. But uh, uh, it doesn't mean just a competition. Uh, it, you know, uh, if we, compete healthy each other, it uh, enhance each other's uh, capability, and eventually we can glow, uh, we can uh, enhance our capability, and we can be better, such a, a concept. So I think uh, it's, again, in the, for the customers and for the industry, it's better uh, for each company be independent and uh, try to work hard to enhance ourselves. I can't leave here uh, without asking you about the Foveon sensor. Mm. Is your team still searching if this sensor can be implemented within cameras that can shoot video? Yes. Ah, video? Yeah, video. Um, that's in the scope of our, uh, our project. First of all, uh, we are still working on the uh, Foveon sensor, or in other words, a three-layer uh, three layer sensor. Uh, we worked uh, such a full frame uh, three layer sensor uh, in the past, but the, the design we had uh, was not uh, good enough to go to the, uh, the, the mass production. So we gave up that uh, design and we started uh, the project from the scratch. Uh, right now, uh, we are, we Sigma, uh, take an initiative uh, to lead that project. Uh, and uh, we will see uh, how the, uh, the prototype sensor uh, works. But the, the first priority is to achieve the best uh, still uh, image quality with a, a studio sensor. If it works well for stills, it's not necessarily that you're gonna neglect it for video and so. When it comes to, yeah, uh, we can create a, a good video in terms of the quality, but the, still the lead out speed is very challenging because you know uh, each pixel location has the three sensors. So if we compete the, the conventional sensor, we need to achieve the three times faster uh, lead out. That's really challenging. Yamaki-san, thank you very much for taking the time to answer all those questions and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, thank you very much for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.